the laws of milk and meat. We're learning what's called Yuridea. It's one of the four, <coughs> uh, four divisions of the big Shulchan Aruch of Rabbi Yosef Cairo. And these are the laws of milk, mixtures of milk and meat. Now, as we know, as Jewish people, it's forbidden for a Jew to boil milk and meat together. And if he does boil it, it's forbidden for him to eat it. And it's also forbidden to get pleasure from it. That's from the Torah. And the rabbis, who the rabbis are commanded from the Torah to make these extra fences. So the rabbis really basically have the same power as the Torah. But the rabbis made a lot of fences around this law. Eat milk and meat, very strange. Milk and meat. And to the point where you're not even allowed to eat milk after meat. You're not supposed to eat milk after meat. From the Torah, only if you boil them together is it forbidden to eat. But here it says you can't even eat milk after meat. It goes without touching if there's meat that touched milk or milk that touched meat. And here's another one. Even the taste of meat is forbidden. The taste of milk is forbidden with the other one. With the other one. Taste of milk with meat. is What do you mean the taste? If you boiled meat in a pot, and af- you cleaned out the pot, and afterwards you cooked milk in that pot, it has to be within 24 hours, and after you cooked milk in that pot, then that milk could be totally forbidden. If you didn't have 60 times as much milk as the taste of the meat in the walls of the pot. How do we measure that? Well, if you knew how much meat that you boiled, then it's as much as the meat you boiled. You boiled one ounce of meat. You took out the meat, you ate it. Nevertheless, we say that one ounce of meat is in the walls of that pot. What if you filled up the pot with meat? Also the same thing if you filled it up with milk, the other way around. Filled up the pot with meat, right? Filled it up with meat, you boiled it, you poured out all the meat, served it to everybody, washed out the pot, totally clean. Now that pot you can never ever use, even if you cooked one ounce of it, you can never use that pot to cook milk in, never. But if you did cook milk in it, then if it's after one day, the milk, what we call bidiavad, is okay. If it's after one day. But now let's go back to our case. You filled up a pot with meat, filled it up with meat. You served the meat, scrubbed out the pot. There's no meat there whatsoever. You waited five hours, 12 hours, 23 hours. You waited. And then you cooked milk in that pot. Well, what do we say? That all of the iron of the pot, the walls, the mass of the walls of the pot, we treat it as though it is 100% meat because you cooked meat in it. We treat it as though it's 100% meat. Let's say the walls of the pot have the volume of, you know, two ounces, the volume. The, 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 as we treat it as that it's 100% meat, two ounces of meat. Now you have to have in the milk that you cook in there, you'll have to have 60 times as much. In other words, 120 ounces in order for it to be permissible. And that's what we're learning inside of Gimel. Let's learn the law quickly. Here we go. Kadeirish abashal bobasar, a pot that you cook in it meat, here, this is Tzadik Gimel. See, Tzadik, can you see? Is there enough light? Too small? Kadeira Apach, a Bishal Bobasa, that you cook in it meat. Lo Yavashal Chalav, you can never cook in it milk. The in Bishal Bobasa, and if you did cook milk in it, Betoch Eit Me'es Laes, within one day, the milk is forbidden, Benotein Tam. No ten tam means if it's there's less than sixty times as much uh, of the in sixty times milk as the meat. If there's less than sixty times milk as the meat, then the milk is forbidden. But im if that pot did happen to rest one full day before you cooked in it the milk, then no ten tam Then that pot is what's called a bad taste. The walls have a bad taste. Umut, we'll learn about bad taste. We'll, we'll see, we'll get to the laws of taruvot, mixtures, in chapter 103. It talks about what, what makes a bad taste. We'll see. In any case, waiting a taste of food, which is in the walls of a pot, after it's there for one full day, 24 hours, then it no longer 
gives a forbidden taste, bidiyavad. Because if you, you cannot cook in that pot, if you cooked in a pot, pork, whatever, even if it's a year later, you can't cook in it permissible things. You can't. Forbidden. But if you did, then because one day passed, you know, not just one day, but 365 days passed, one day passed, is therefore the taste is after the act, it doesn't have anything power to forbid anything, but mutar and the the food is permissible. But the pot is forbidden to boil in it, not milk or meat. Like we said before, you cooked in a pot meat and you waited one year, you cooked in the pot milk, that pot is forever forbidden to cook in it milk or meat. But if you did cook in it, it would be okay. other But other things, it is okay. Let's go now to chapter Tzadik Dalet. That's what we got up to last time. Sticking a milchika spoon into a pot of meat. Ready? Yes. Din atochev kaf chalav is the law of sticking a milchika spoon in a pot of meat. And there are in this nine <coughs> laws. Hatochev, now again, what we're learning here is the Shulchan Oruch of Rabbi Yosef Cairo, Uridea, chapter 94. Tzadik Dalad. This is part of the laws of milk and meat. A one who sticks a spoon, a milk like a spoon, in a pot of meat, or ipcha, or the other way around, in other words, a spoon of meat, a meaty spoon, into a pot of milk that's boiling. She'om the, I mean, mesha'arim, bakal ma she'tachav mimenu bekadera, we measure how much of the spoon you stuck in the pot. When, says, if the spoon is within one day, you used it in a clearishon within one day. Okay, let me explain what is a clearishon with this. How does a spoon become milchik? How does it become fleshik? How does a spoon, right, a milchika spoon gets stuck in a fleshik, right? A meat, a milk spoon gets stuck in a meat pot. How, what does it mean, a milk spoon? How does a spoon become milchik? Right, somebody says, Rabbi, oh, I just did a terrible thing. I cut my, my, my uh, cheese with a meat knife. Or the other way around. I cut the cheese with a meat knife or cut my meat with a milk what is it what makes that a spoon milchik or fleshik so it says like this it has to be that spoon let's say you want the spoon a milchik a spoon what does it mean milchik a spoon it means that you stirred milk with that spoon boiling milk with that spoon And now that's less than 24 hours ago. Less than 24 hours ago. So you have a big pot of milk. It's boiling. And you stuck a spoon in it. That makes the spoon milk. That's I, I, called... I, yes? I have a fast question about this, uh, the spoon in boiling milk. What if you put the spoon into a hot cup of coffee? I'll talk because about that right now. It, right? But it's yeah, not yeah. boiling. Right now. Right now we'll talk about that. Right now we'll talk about that. I was right in the middle of the sentence. Okay, so you stick the spoon in a boiling hot pot of milk. The milk is boiling. Then the spoon is forbidden. That pot, and this also will be helpful for you when we learn the laws of Shabbat, that pot is called a Kli number one, Kli Rishon. Kli Rishon means a pot that is on the fire or was directly on the fire. That's called a Kli Rishon on the fire. But what if, like Yerachel like Ye- 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 just asked, what if I didn't stick the spoon into a pot of boiling milk? Which is a very rare thing. I mean, how often do you stir boiling, whoever has boiling milk anyway? I mean, maybe some people like boiling milk. Could be they do. But it's rare. Usually milk things are not that hot. But let's say for the purpose of the Shulchan Aruch, you boil a pot of milk and you stick a spoon in it. That spoon is now milchik. What if you have a more common thing? You have a cup of uh, coffee 
and you pour in that cup of coffee milk. What's the law? Doesn't make, you stick in that pot, a spoon stirred up, doesn't make the spoon milk. Doesn't make, I'll even give you a better one. I'll give you a better one. You boil milk, boiled milk, and you pour that boiled milk into your coffee, coffee cup. Now you have milk that was just boiled, blazing hot, and you poured it into your coffee cup. That's called a klisheni. It's no longer a klirishon. And according to most opinions, almost all opinions, that does not have the power to make this spoon milchik. Only, like you said over here, only a klirishon makes a something milchik or fleshik. A klisheni not. How much more so here, where the milk is poured in? It's a doubt if it's even yad soletus bo. It's a, if, it's, if it's even hot anymore, it may be a little bit hot, right? And if it is, you have to understand: was there sixty? Did you how much milk did you pour into your to, to your coffee? You know, was it maybe one more than one sixtieth? Is very common. <clears throat> so that's what makes something milchik or fleshik. So now here we go, and let's go back to our law. You have a milchik spoon. You just stuck it into a pot of boiling milk and you pulled it out. And now you stick only the head of this spoon into a small pot of meat, boiling meat. Okay, now what's going on? You have to have 60 in the meat against the spoon. Against the whole spoon? Mm, I don't know. Let's see. You have to have 60 against, here it says, let's do the law again. Hatochev kaf chalevis, one who sticks a milk a spoon into a pot of milk or the uh, meat or the other way around. What you stuck of the spoon makes the meat usser. Now you have to have 60, unless there is 60 in the meat against what you stuck of the spoon into the meat. Is what you did not stick into the meat, you don't count that. So how much milk now is in that meat, do we say? How much milk came out of that milk like a spoon? Only the amount that you stuck the spoon into the meat. Let's go further. And some people say, If it was a metal spoon, then Misharin Bakulo then we measure the entire spoon, mishum, the cham mikzaso, because something that is a little bit hot, cham kulo, it is totally hot. That's metal, right? That's metal is. You have a spoon, you stick it into something hot, the whole spoon becomes hot. Right? Doesn't that work yet? Says the Ramah, the svor, we shown an iker, but the main opinion is the first one. Only what you stick of the spoon into the cholent do you have to measure? You stuck a little bit of the spoon. Let's say the spoon is, is this big. Here we go, this big, this is the spoon, this whole thing, this is the spoon. Well, let me see, maybe I can find something that, is, that we can simulate as a spoon to use as an example for you young men. Have I got anything over here? I have all sorts of things over here. Here, here we go. Uh, here, oh, do this, let's do this. Here is the spoon, right? And this is the, the end of the spoon. This part of the spoon, here, like this. Oh, this is the end part of the spoon. There it is. And I stick the spoon into the pot up to here, up to this line. Stick it in and I stir, right? Previously, I took this spoon and I stirred a pot of milk. I stuck this into the milk up to here. This is where I held my hand. Let's see, up to here. I stuck into the milk. I stuck this in, the, the whole thing became hot. After I stuck it into the boiling milk, oh, it really became hot after a while. I had to put a towel over here, and, right? And now I put this down and my wife comes in and she stirs up the pot of meat with the same, usually it's the other way around. The wife does the, what, the right thing and the man messes it up. So I take this spoon, this spoon which is a milk spoon, super milk. My wife just stirred up milk with it and I stick it into meat up to here. How much meat do I have to have in the pot? 60 times, 60 times what? 
60 times the whole spoon, the whole spoon became hot. Milchik says no. One opinion says yes, the whole thing. The first opinion says no, only up to here. And the Roma says this is the opinion, only up to here do I have to have. And that ends today's class. God bless you all. Be with us tomorrow, 8.30 in the morning.